Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we've got Chaos Gallimon helping us out because I don't have any bug Digimon to help us out with the final of the second wave of starter decks. Uh, so today we'll be going over the Izzy Gaia Green starter deck. I saved that one for last because I actually had to build a green deck myself so I could kind of understand like uh, at least a playstyle if not the playstyle for it. Um, so without any further ado, let's get right into it. Uh, the first positive right off the bat is that there hasn't been an Izzy already. There has been uh, TK, but there hasn't been an Izzy. So already I am really happy about that. Uh, because with the other ones, we just got uh, markers that we already had in a different color. We already had the Crest of Courage, and we already had the Crest of Friendship. Uh, but we don't have the Crest of Knowledge yet, so I really like that. So, getting this one open, we've got the Great Legends pack again, which we will save till the end to open. Let's, so, let's... Uh, little plastic thing they put around it. Like, I like that it keeps it safe. I would really like a better way, because getting them back on is not good. So again, as we just alluded to, we've got Crest of Knowledge coins, which I like, because again, we haven't had those yet. So that's pretty cool. Other than that, it's the same rules cards that we've gotten before. Nothing new there. So let's get right into it, starting with the Dijigs. We've got Motimon, uh, which has the inheritable effect of while this Digimon is level 6 or higher, it gets plus 1000 DP. That is very situational. I'm not sure how much I would use that. Um, he's just looking at the deck that I made. I use Minomon, uh, which uh, if you attack one of your opponent's Digimon, this Digimon gets plus 1,000 DP for the turn. So that already kind of has a very similar effect to it, but it's much more broad. Um, and you do get four copies of Modimon. Now, on to the rookies. We have four vanilla Floromon. They've got a two play cost, a one Digivolution cost, 4,000 DP, and no effect. I like Floromon. She's really pretty. I also like how she's, uh... Having a tea party with uh, Blossomon in the back, who's another one of my favorites. Not much more we can say about her. Next up, we have four copies of Tentamon, who's got three play cost, a zero digivolution cost, uh, 2000 DP, and he's got the active ability. Uh, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a green Digimon card, add it to your hand. Otherwise, place it at the bottom of your deck. I mean, this gives you draw power, so that's good. Um, however, going with the baby where it's uh, level 6 or higher, uh, all level 7s, I think as of right now, are white. Because I went back and checked, and Chaosmon is, and, uh, what's it? Millenniumon is. So that really only helps up to level 6. You're going to be end up putting up your level 7s beneath it. Uh, but in a dedicated green deck, that's a good card to have. I would definitely advise putting it in. Next up, we got four copies of Palamon. It has a 3 play cost, a 0 digivolution cost, 2000 DP, and it has the inheritable effect that uh, 
If you attack an opponent's Digimon, this Digimon gets plus 2,000 DP for the turn. So that's another good effect, uh, especially with the way that I built my green deck. It It's made to suspend opponent's Digimon, and then you attack into them, destroying them, leaving your opponent without much to play with. So that is definitely a good one for its effect. And the last of the rookies we have is four copies of Kunamon, which is a four to play, zero Digivolution, 5,000 DP, and no effect. So this is just a straight up vanilla. Uh, nothing special about it. Uh, but yeah, I would... This isn't all right as a one or two off in a deck. I would say it's got good attack power that could take out some champions. Um, and because it digivolves 4-0, uh, you could definitely use it for some niche circumstances, I feel. Now on to the champions. We start out with four copies of Togemon, which has four play cost, two digivolution cost, 4,000 DP, and it has the effect... Uh, when attacking, if you attack an opponent's Digimon, this Digimon gets plus 2,000 DP for the turn. So again, going into the you want to suspend your opponent's Digimon and attack into them, uh, which is a good strategy, but at the same time, you need to get rid of security cards. So not sure how good that would be. Uh, we'll see with the rest of the deck. Next up, we got four copies of Vanilla Quagamon, who's got a five play cost, a two digivolution cost, and 6,000 DP. Um, I always liked Quagamon. Maybe it was because we were introduced to him so early in the series. I don't know. I just like his design. And then we've got uh, the last of our champions with two copies of this training Kabuterimon, who's got a six to play cost, a one digivolution cost, 5,000 DP, and he has the blocker ability. Uh, and when attacking, you lose two memory. So, standard champion blocker. Again, I like at least two blockers in a deck, so that is fine. Going on to the ultimates, we start out with four vanilla copies of uh, Oquagamon with a six play cost, two digivolution cost, and 7,000 DP. Again, not much that I can say about these vanillas other than their artwork, and this one, he's just a screamer boy. Nothing, nothing too crazy there. Next we've got four copies of Lilymon, who's got a six play cost, a three digivolution cost, 7,000 DP, and an active effect that says... When Digivolving, reveal the top five cards of your deck. Add one level six or higher Digimon among them to your hand. Place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. This one I'd probably go down to two uh, for the regular structure deck format where there's only like four level sixes. Uh, because I don't think you need four copies. Uh, like you do get to put the ones at the bottom in any order. So with the standard, well, with, you have to have a 50 card deck. This isn't like Yu-Gi-Oh! or anything like that. So because of that, uh, if you drew all four of them, you could put 20 cards in any order at the bottom of your deck, but you'd still have to cycle through about 20 others before you got them. Uh, so yeah, I would say two copies of this maybe? Four seems a bit excessive. Uh, then the last of our ultimates is two copies of Mega Kabuterimon, who's got uh, seven play cost, three digivolution cost, 7,000 DP, and he's got the inherit inheritable effect of your turn once per turn. When this Digimon deletes an opponent's Digimon in battle and survives, trash the top card of your opponent's security stack. Okay, so this is... A very nice one because I was just commenting on the deck is made to take out 
Suspended Digimon. So this one allows you to take Suspended Digimon and trash the top card of their security stack without having to actually attack into it. So this is a real nice one. I would put this one up to four. I would take Lilymon down to two, put Mega Kapoterimon up to four. Because uh, I'd much rather have his effect than hers. Now we're on to the Megas. Starting with two copies of Rosamon, who's got a 10 play cost, a 3 Digivolution cost, uh, 11,000 DP, and the active effect says, when Digivolving, one of your opponent's Digimon can't attack or block until the end of their next turn. So this is a stall card. I think it's fine at 2. I don't think I would run it in at 4. Uh, I think it's... Perfectly good. I'm going to put the Izzy box back because I completely forgot to do that. So yeah, I don't think that I'd want to put any more than that because it is a wind digivolving effect, which means you're going to get it once, maybe twice if you can retrieve it from your traf app, trash after it's been uh, deleted. So our final Megas are Hercules Kabuterimon, which we get two copies of. It's got a 12 play cost, a 4 digivolution cost, 12,000 DP, and it has the active effect of piercing. So when this Digimon attacks and deletes an opponent's Digimon and survives the battle, it performs uh, any security stack as normal. And it's got a uh, Digiburst 2, uh, trash 2 uh, of this Digimon's Digivolution cards to activate the effect below. Suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. I like this guy. This guy works well with what the deck is because I was thinking there's a lot of vanillas in this deck. I don't like how many there are. He allows you to trash some of those vanillas, suspend one of your uh, opponent's Digimon, then uh, you would be able to attack into it, pierce through, attack the security stack, and if, uh, which one was it, Mega Kabuterimon is beneath it, you would be able to trash another uh security off their stack. So this guy's nice. I still don't think it uh, about all the vanillas in the deck. I still don't think that it what's the word? Uh, resorts? I don't know. But it, they're, the reasoning for it. I don't think that there's a reason for all the vanillas in the deck uh, other than it is a starter deck. Because you could e easily have effects uh, and just trash those. Because there's no difference in trashing an effect versus trashing a vanilla. Um, it's just the effects give you more options. So those are all the Digimon. Now we're on to the Tamers, which there's four copies of Izzy. Who's got a two play cost. Uh, he's got the effect your turn when one of your opponent's Digimon becomes suspended. Uh, you may suspend this tamer to gain one memory, and the security effect of play this card without paying its memory cost. This one's alright. I probably played at two. Uh, only because there's, again, very niche circumstances for using it. Like, I could see your uh, opponent attacking and suspending their Digimon, uh, and then if they're at zero memory, you could suspend this guy and make their turn end after that point. So there's that situation. I don't think it's worth running for because I would definitely want one of the other trainers, which is if you start your turn at two or less memory, you are at three memory. Um, so a good one definitely would go down. Now we're on to the option cards. Starting with four copies of Needle Spray. Uh, which has a cost of two, and its main effect is to spend one of your opponent's Digimon, and its uh, security effect is activate this card's main effect, then add this card to your hand. This is a good one. I probably would put two in my deck. I'd have to relook at what option cards I have, but that security effect is really good. Uh, you're not going to pull it off all the time, but just being able to suspend an opponent's um, Digimon is real good. I might not because I'm trying to think back to what I have in my deck and I have a couple which are like, I don't think the, I think the most expensive I have is 
four. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, because like for in my deck, I have for uh, three cost. I've got Puppet Pummel, which is suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. Then one of your Digimon gets plus 2,000 DP for the turn. Um, so that's only one more. I would probably keep that in. Again, this isn't in the deck. You can tell because it's got the green sleeves. This is from mine. Uh, but it's still a good card. So the last option card in the deck is Electroshocker. It has a five cost. It has the effect... Uh, return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to that owner's hand. Trash all of the Digivolution cards uh, of that Digimon with the security effect of activate this card's main effect. This is real good. This one, it's worth the five because, like, they have Omnimon or Chaosmon out and it's suspended. You just plop this down. That goes back to their hand. Everything underneath it goes away. All that work they've done is now gone. Um, this is definitely good as a two-off. Maybe a one? I'm not sure. I definitely don't think it needs more than that. Uh, so, the green deck, what do I think of it? I think it has a good promise for uh, modification off of it. It's definitely got good cards that I would definitely decide purchasing the deck for. Um, like I said, my deck is all about uh, suspending Digimon and attacking into them, which does appear that the Guy Green deck does go with. So I definitely would say that uh, I did pick the right playstyle when figuring out how my deck works. So yeah, this one is probably a good one to pick up. Uh, so moving on, we've got the one pack that we got. So let's take a look and see what we get out of this. Nice clean open. Take out the back card. We got Aqua Viper. We got Cerebrus Mon, which he's one of my favorites. Grapple Leomon. Fugamon, Golemon, Labramon, Atomic Inferno, Agunimon to go with that Atomic Inferno. We got Lotusmon, uh, all turns while your opponent Plays a level four little Digimon, suspend it. So yeah, this would go good in the Guy Green deck, uh, just to allow for more suspensions. Uh, we got this Digi Egg, uh, Sakutomon, uh, we got the Green Tamer, which on play return one Digi Egg card from your trash to the bottom of your Digi Egg deck. Uh, when digivolving one of your Digimon into a Digimon card with the Digiburst, you may suspend this Tamer to reduce the Digimon Digivolution cost by one. And security is play this card without paying its cost. And all right, Tamer, I would probably take out one of the Izzy's to put it in just because of uh, the Izzy's effect. Like, if you have four in the deck, that'd probably be very good, but... Whatever. And then we got a uh, Marine Chimeramon. So an alright booster for modifying the deck that we got. Alright, so give me just one minute. I'm going to rearrange and stuff, and then we'll get back to this for something a little extra. All right, and we are back. Um, so what I wanted to do is that I have gotten my hands on all six of the Star Decks released so far, and I figured I'd give them a quick rating. So if you find one, you can decide which one, if it's worth it for you. So at the bottom is 
the Machine Black deck. Only because, like I said, this one is very defensive. It's all about uh, blocking and stopping your opponent from getting two of your security stacks. And that's not a viable play option. That is a stall tactic. Uh, after that, we have the Heaven's Yellow starter deck. Uh, because I don't really remember what its playstyle is. And that is not a good uh, kind of uh, stance to have. Like, if you build a starter deck, you want starter deck. You want something that stands out. You want a play style that can be immediately uh, kind of shown off, and you know what's going on. After that, uh, like we start getting into some muddled territory, I would probably go with. Probably gonna go with uh, the Coyotes Blue. This one and the next one uh, being the Gaia Red deck. They could be interchangeable. Um, this one's got really high attack powers, uh, which makes it easy to just plow through things. And with the Gaia Force as a last ditch effort to get rid of your opponent's stuff, it's got good removal for those niche situations. This one's Disruption, where it's taking away Digimon from underneath, uh, makes it very good, especially in the new Digiburst era, where you need those things underneath it to use their extra effects. So either one is very good. And then we got another toss-up with the top two for me, which would be the Venom Violet and the Guy Green. I'm going to give Venom, Venom Violet the... Uh, the top spot, only because I do like the purple Digimon, so that makes a lot of sense to me to have it up there. It's my playstyle, it's what I enjoy. Um, the Guy Green deck is also very good, so that one, again, a nice uh, way. Um, it does have a lot of those DP boosting for when attacking into opponent's Digimons and things like that, uh, so we'll be able to get through. And you could always put in some uh, Digimon with jamming into the deck so that they could uh, attack on through to the uh, security Digimon and not have to worry about being deleted. Um, a couple of these could probably swapped around a bit, but this is more or less how I see it. Like, again, there's just, there's no strategy in the Machine Black, so I can't put it higher. Like, you'd think, oh, it's a newer deck, it deserves to be up here because of power creep and it's meant to be stronger, but it just it doesn't have a win condition. Gaia Red has a win condition. Uh, Coyotes Blue has a stall condition where you're removing stuff from your opponents and making it harder for them to get all their abilities off. Uh, these two, like piercing, that is a great ability. Security uh, attack plus one, those are both great things for your main ones in the deck. Um, so yeah. If you can find them, uh, I would definitely say pick up the purple and the green. Leave the black off to the side. If you can't find any of the new ones, the red or the blue are still great options. I hear that these are starting to come to other retailers. Initially, Target was the only one getting any of this stuff. Uh, but it's my understanding that uh, Walmart is now getting the first waves. And Target is now getting the second waves, so Walmart is a wave behind, essentially. Um, if you can find one in your area, take a look. Uh, if you need to travel a bit outside of your area, you could find stuff. Um, again, in my area, I was only able to find the Venom Venomous Violet uh, deck for the new 2.0. And then I went about an hour and a half away, and I found, like, multiple copies of the new ones uh, just hanging on the wall there. It's really all about um, the, uh, like, how many people are in the area that are interested in collecting Digimon, about how many that store is going to have. And just going outside that area, I was able to find an incredible amount. 
Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on all the starter decks, uh, of all the new second wave starter decks. We kind of touched on the first wave ones in a single video. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. Um, comments are great too. Like this video, enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Digimon content. Uh, I'm going to be trying to put out content every two weeks. If I can get a good amount of Digimon cards incoming, I want to start doing this once a week. Um, so yeah, uh, that's all for today. I hope you enjoy this video, and I will see you next time.